Pretty face, funny hat. That's what my blondie is. Lovable feet, both flat. That's what my Dagwood is. Blondie's not always right. I let her think she is. All of my thoughts are bright. Long as he thinks they're his. Life for us is fun and crazy. Baby Duffling. Us and Daisy. What a family. Incredible. Bumsteadable. <laughs> Hurry, you'll miss your bus. Watch out, you'll burn your stew. Nothing's too much for us. As long as with me there's you. Dagwood and Blondie. Blondie and Dagwood. Always with me there's you. I didn't make the cake large enough for the word anniversary, so I had to bake another one. Can we have the small one? And not until after Daddy's seen it. Can we clean the bowl for you, Mom? All right, dear, but don't spoil your dinner. Mommy, when I grow up, will I have anniversaries, too? If you get married, dear. Gee, do I have to? Uh, now, look, both of you hurry up and run along and wrap up the presents you have for Daddy. Yeah, and the ones we got for you, too. What are you getting for Pop, Mom? I'm not telling, but you'll see it as soon as Daddy gets home. What's Pop giving you? I don't know. <laughs> Daddy was so cute when he left this morning. He never even mentioned the word anniversary. He wanted me to think he'd forgotten all about it. But I know Daddy. He never forgets. I wonder if Mr. Radcliffe will let him come home any earlier today, seeing it's your anniversary. I'm not sure, Alexander. Daddy had an appointment with Mr. Breckenridge at the bank to talk about building the new hospital. And when Daddy starts talking about buildings... <laughs> Nothing can stop him. Now, remember, Dagwood, don't talk. Keep your mouth closed. I'll say all that's to be said. <laughs> okay, Mr. Radcliffe. And remember that Mr. Breckenridge has charge of the hospital finances. He will award all the contracts, and we have to make a good impression on him. How do you do? Oh, oh. How do you do? What can I do for you? Well, right now, I'd like to see Mr. Breckenridge. I am George Radcliffe of the Radcliffe Construction Company. Oh, yes. Oh, and uh, I'm... Uh, uh, Mr. Breckenridge is busy at the moment with the chairman of the hospital charity drive. I hope you won't mind waiting. Oh, no, indeed. It would be a pleasure. Good day. Uh, is that the chairman of the charity drive? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope he turned in the Bumstead's $2. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah, but you never can tell about those fellas. I know, but I bought a lottery ticket once, and it turned out to be a fake. See, the fella nip... You may go in now, Mr. Radcliffe. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon, Radcliffe. Good afternoon, Mr. Breckenridge. Uh, you know my uh, head draftsman, uh, Dagwood Bumstead? Yeah. Oh, I... yes. I remember him. Sit down, Radcliffe. Thank you. And uh, you. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> You've uh, read my letter about the exact size of the hospital? Oh, yes, Mr. Breckenridge. Uh, Dagwood, huh? read the notes. Read the notes. Yeah. Read the notes. Yes, for heaven's sake, Bumstead, read the notes. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> the notes. Mm hmm there you are. Now, uh, Mr. Breckenbridge, do you uh, specify 80 private rooms, 40 semi-private rooms, two operating rooms, and one anesthesia... Anesthes anesthes <laughs> the place where you put him to sleep. <laughs> 
Uh, one emergency clinic, and of course we have diet kitchens and a solarium and three wards, uh, but only one fraternity ward. Maternity ward? Uh, yes, we only have one. Well, for a town of this size, I thought one maternity ward would be sufficient. Oh, no, no, uh, Mr. Breckenbridge, I, 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 I checked the, the birth rate on this town, and uh, there are more young babies born in this town than any other town in this state. Dagwood, one maternity ward will be sufficient. Of course, Redcliffe, right, you know that new firm in town, Burley and Dalton, is uh, bidding on this job with you. Of course, personally, I'd like to award the contract to your firm, especially after the fine job you did in building this bank for me. But uh, as it isn't my money alone, I think it's only fair that there should be competitive bidding with the firm submitting the best plans at the best price, getting the contract. That's perfectly fair, Mr. Brickenbridge. Well, that's about all I had to say. Good day. Well, good day. I, 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 oh, well. <laughs> Good day. Ma, you weren't in there very long. Well, if I do say so myself, I'm quite a fast worker. <laughs> uh, 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 this thing only runs when it feels like it. Huh? Oh, uh, maybe you got a little dust in it or something. <laughs> Let me look at it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> a little stubborn, but I'll fix it. Dag, would you better not? Uh, let him try to fix it. It's not worth anything. I understand there's only one other firm after the hospital contract. Oh, yes, those newcomers, uh, Burley and Dalton. They saw Mr. Breckenbridge this morning. Oh. Confidentially, I hope you get the contract, Mr. Radcliffe. Oh, no. You do? I don't want you to think that I'm forward, but are you really Miss Stafford? I'm not married. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> Wait a minute. Huh? Oh, the, 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 the wrong end came off. Now look what you've done. Oh, it really doesn't matter. I've had the watch ten years. It's time I got a new one. I shall have this crystal replaced immediately, and I shall deliver it to you personally. Uh, should I bring it to the office or to your apartment? Whichever you like. If I'm not at home, you can leave it with my mother. Oh. Oh. I'll bring it here. Come on, Dagwood. Well... Give me that. I, uh, yeah. Oh, well, I, uh... Bumstead. Huh? Oh. You're going to pay huh? for this crystal. I'll take it out of your salary. Oh, now, we don't have to get a new crystal. Just have the old one glued back in. It, there's no sense getting a new one for an old watch. You heard her say herself that it wasn't worth anything, and she needs a new one. Now, if she's going to get a new watch... Just a minute. Just it, a minute. Just a minute. A new watch. Oh, Dagwood, what an idea. Oh, now, now, wait a minute, Mr. Radcliffe. I can't afford a new watch. You can't, but I can. Uh huh? Do you understand? No. If I get Miss Stafford a new watch, it'll put me, I mean, it'll put the Radcliffe Construction Company in good with her. She, in turn, will put us in good with Breckenbridge. Now, do you get it? I, I think so. You run along to the office. I'll see you later. And this hospital will be the biggest job I have ever handled. I? Well, uh, I and Mr. Radcliffe. If it hadn't been for me and my notes, Radcliffe... He, he, huh? Oh. <laughs> Dagwood, come into my office, will you? Oh, uh, certainly, sir. <laughs> yes, Mr. Radcliffe? Wait till you see what I have. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Is it solid gold? Well, if it isn't, I've been chipped for $300. You sure like Miss Stafford, huh? Oh, I do. <laughs> I mean, well, it isn't that I like Miss Stafford so much. It's, uh, it's for the good of the Radcliffe Construction Company. <laughs> now, it's too late to deliver the watch this afternoon. The bank is closed. I want you to do me a favor. Why, certainly, Mr. Radcliffe. <laughs> I'm going to be very busy tomorrow morning, and I want you to deliver the watch to Miss Stafford before you come to the office. Now, there must be no slip-up in the Stagwood. This is very important to me. I mean, to the Radcliffe Construction Company, that Miss Stafford gets this watch the first thing in the morning. You understand? Yes, you want me to come to the office and pick up Miss Stafford? Uh, I mean the watch. No, no, no. Listen carefully. Before you come to the office... Oh, my. You both look 
look so nice. We'll pretend we've forgotten all about the anniversary. Come on. Bye, honey. Huh? my birthday, is it? Oh, Pa, quit kidding. Open your presents and see what cooking I gave you for your anniversary. Oh, this is an anniversary? Dagwood, your present is so beautiful, I don't know how to thank you. Yeah, well, then, then don't. But, darling, it's simply exquisite and in such good taste. Uh, Blondie, uh, <clears throat> you see, I was so busy all day at the office that you I did You weren't I, too busy that... to get me the most beautiful watch I've ever had. Watch? Oh. How do you like your fishing rod, Pop? Fishing? Oh, yeah. Let's go and have dinner, then. I'm starved. <laughs> Come on, dear. I don't want the roast to get overdone. Look, look Blondie, there's something i got to tell you. Well, what is it, dear? Uh, that watch. Yes? Uh, that watch. What? Come on, Pop. Wait till you see the anniversary cake Mom made for you. Oh. oh, what was it you wanted to tell me about the watch, dear? The watch? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, the watch. Well, it uh, won't run underwater. <laughs> Oh, Dagwood. <laughs> huh? Dagwood, hurry up and eat your breakfast. You know, dear, this is the most wonderful present you've ever given me. Mommy, can I see it again? You sure outdid yourself this time, Pop. Mommy, can I have more milk? Yes, yeah, certainly you can, dear. I want you to deliver the watch to Mrs. Stafford before you come to the office. Now, there must be no slip-up on this, Dagwood. It's very important to me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir? What? Uh, oh, uh, oh, nothing, Bonnie. I, I was just thinking out loud. Oh. Yeah. Well, you'd better be thinking about getting to the office or you're going to be late. Yeah. Uh, Blondie, dear, uh, mm -hmm. why couldn't I take the watch downtown and ha have it engraved? Oh, no, Dagwood. I'd rather wear it a day or two first. Yep, but... Oh. but... <laughs> Goodbye, dear. Bye, Bye Daddy. Goodbye, everybody. It's a pleasure to see you come out of your front door like a human being and not like a cyclone knocking me flat on my back every time I deliver the mail. <laughs> yes, sir.
Uh, thinking of hawking something? Hey, no, boy, but am I glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better get on up to the office. We're both late now. Uh, look, Ollie, uh, I'm in trouble. Again? Yeah. What is it this time? Yeah, look, Ollie, I gotta have $27.50 right away. Can you lend it to me? Oh, I'd like to, but you huh? caught me a little short this week, Dag. Oh. Why don't you get an advance from Radcliffe? Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Oh, I'm sorry, Dag. Huh? Are you willing to pay a little interest on this loan? Oh, oh, sure, I'll pay you interest, Ollie. Not me, it's somebody else. He'll loan you the money. That's his business. Where, where will I find him? I've got his phone number up the office. You stay here and I'll have him meet you right away. Yeah, see? well, Ollie, how will he know it's me when he meets me? Oh, here. See? Oh. I'll tell him you're wearing a white carnation. You uh -huh. stay right here. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Bumstead. Oh, good, good. Oh, good morning, Mr. Brackenbridge. Have you started on the plans for the hospital yet, Mr. Bumstead? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I'm starting on them right away. Um, now, uh, don't let me keep you from going from wherever you're going, Mr. Uh, Brackenbridge. I have plenty of time. I'm uh, well, just taking my morning constitutional. Uh, Mr. Bumstead, there was something you didn't make quite clear yesterday in reference to... No, no, no. Both were imposing, sir. Which one of you guys is Dagwood Bumstead? Oh, uh... This is uh, Mr. Bumstead. Oh, oh well, I'm glad to meet you, Bumstead. Uh, duke me, duke me. Oh. My name is Sharky. Now, how much do you need, kid? Oh, oh, yes. <clears throat> well, I'll need about 40 carload of sand and about three carload of cement. Wait a minute. Well, who knows from sand and cement? How much lettuce do you need? Lettuce? Yeah. Oh, yes, lettuce. <laughs> oh, yes. You, you see, my wife is giving a big party, and we're going to have hundreds of sandwiches, and I'll need about a, a ton of lettuce. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's all this double talk for? Shh. Oh, well, you see, that's Mr. Breckenbridge, the yeah. president of the bank, yeah. and I don't want him to know that I need money. So. Well, being broke ain't nothing to be ashamed of. You know that? Like, even, even bankers need a little touch every once in a while. Uh -huh. you, you heard of a run on a bank, ain't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, what do you think they're running for? Because the bank's broke, that's why. Oh. <laughs> now, come on, let's get down to business. How much do you need, kid? Well, I did need about $27.50, but I only need $27 now because I had the 50 cents. <laughs> $27.50? That's chicken feed, that's all. Chicken feed, here. Oh. <laughs> There's 30 bucks. I never carry singles. Uh, yes, but I only need $27. Keep the 30, kid. Keep the 30. You know, it makes the bookkeeping easier for me with the round figures. Uh, oh, Gee, thanks. Now, now, when do I have to pay you back? You just take all the time you want, palsy. All the time you want. Swell. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Uh, how much interest do I have to pay on this loan? Only ten cents a day. Okay. On the dollar. Radcliffe shouldn't have done this. Yeah. Hmm, Cardis. There's nothing cheap about your boss. Well, we meet again. Did you want to see me about something? Uh, well, I... Uh... Uh, he forgot his fountain pen yesterday. Huh? Oh, I oh. see. Uh, did you get all that lettuce you needed? Lettuce? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, goodbye, Miss Stafford. Oh, just a minute. Huh? That's the way I got it. Yeah. Well, hello.
Carters? Who's speaking, please? Oh, Mr. Carter. Well, this is Miss Stafford, Mr. Breckenbridge's secretary at the bank. Yes, Mr. Radcliffe purchased a watch here. Well, it's not very ethical to tell you just how much he paid for it, but I assure you it was quite expensive. Well, if you don't believe me, Mr. Carter, I'll bring the watch over and show it to you. Uh, do that, Miss Stafford. There must be some mistake. Carters stand behind every piece of merchandise they sell. We have the dance floor. And here we have the orchestra. Did Sharky show up? Yeah. Did he loan you the money you needed? Shh. Huh? Uh, is Mr. Radcliffe in? And he's been looking for you since 9.30. Ah, there you are, Dagwood. Well, what did Miss Stafford think of the switch? It, it, a switch? Yes, giving her a new watch instead of the old one. Oh, just fine, I guess. You guess? Well, how did she act? Oh, she seemed very pleased. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. All that money I spent for that watch wasn't wasted. Am I in good with Miss Stafford now? <laughs> I mean, with Mr. Breckenbridge. And you too, Dagwood. Oh. Yes? Uh, Miss Stafford is on the phone, Mr. Radcliffe. Put her on immediately. Uh, Dagwood! Oh. Don't you go. You're in on this, too, you know. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Miss Stafford, and how are you this wonderful morning? Uh, by the way, um, I didn't bring my watch with me. Uh, could you tell me what time it is by your watch? You what? Carter said that? You're over there now. Put him on the phone. You say the watch wasn't purchased in your store? That it's only a second-hand cheap imitation? That it didn't cost more than $10 when it was new? It's absolutely true, Mr. Radcliffe. Yes. There, uh, there must be a mistake. Somewhere. <laughs> Put Miss Stafford back on the phone, will you please? Oh, she just left. Oh, I uh, have to get to work on the hospital. If what I just heard is true, you're going to be the first customer in that hospital. Uh-huh. What happened to that watch? Uh, the watch? Yes. Oh, 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 yes, the watch. Well, I, I, I gave it to Blondie. You gave it to Blondie? Yes, for our anniversary. You gave my watch to Blondie? Well. Do you know that you're nothing more than a common thief? If you don't bring that watch back, I can have you thrown in jail? Dagwood, huh? I'm not going to have you thrown in jail. No. I'm going to throw you out of here. You're fired. No, no. Yes, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. yes. Good afternoon, young man. Oh, hello. It looks like my little friends are getting to know you. <laughs> you must be a very nice young man. It took me longer than a week to win them over. A week and a day. You know, young man, I've been studying you the last few days, and something seems to be troubling you. Yeah. Now, you know, when I have troubles, I always feel better if I tell them to someone. I am in trouble. Then tell me, son. Well, I was fired from my job a little over a week ago. And every day I've been leaving my house early, pretending I was going to work. And I didn't want to tell my wife. Well, I haven't been able to get another job. I, 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 I don't know what to do. Why, that's no problem, son. Yeah, but today would have been my payday, and I have enough pay envelope to take home. I even spent my last nickel for peanuts. Then go home and tell your wife the truth. I'm sure she's an understanding woman. Oh, bloody, uh, I mean, my wife is. <laughs> she's a very wonderful woman. Well, then go home, son. Make a clean breast of everything. Do, do, do you really think she'll understand me? I'm sure she will. Then I'll do it. Good. You know, young man, I always told my wife everything. That's why she left me 20 years ago. Dagwood, 
Billy, is well, something the matter? Well, there's something I want to talk to you about. You'd better come over here and sit down. <clears throat> well, what was it you wanted to talk to me about? Well, that, that watch, Blondie. Oh, my watch. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to tell you about that, dear. Everybody I've shown it to thinks it's the loveliest thing they've ever seen. Yeah. Blondie, the watch costs $300. Yeah. Well, didn't you wonder how I got the money to buy your watch that expensive? No, I know how you got it. You do? Last year on our anniversary, you mm -hmm. said that this year you were going to get me something that I could really be proud of. So for one year, you've been shining your own shoes, huh? skipping dessert at lunch, yeah. and sometimes skipping lunch. Huh? You've been hitching rides home from work to save bus fare, huh? and you haven't read a detective magazine for months and months. No. Now, going without all those little luxuries for uh, a year, uh, you must have saved at least... Four hundred dollars. <laughs> I could have, couldn't I? Mm. Mm. If the watch cost three hundred dollars, uh -huh. what did you do with the other hundred dollars, <laughs> Dadwood? Oh, well, I... Uh, uh, I didn't save four hundred dollars, Blondie. No? No, I didn't even save two hundred dollars. Not even a hundred. Well, how much did you save, Dad? I didn't save anything. Well, then how could you buy me this watch? I didn't buy you the watch, Blondie. That's the reason I got fired. Fired? Yeah. Why? That's what I want to talk to you about. How are the plans for that hospital coming along? I'll have them all finished in a few days. Well, I don't have to tell you how important it is that we get the contract to build that hospital. We have to underbid Burley and Dalton. Well, I can assure you, Mr. Radcliffe, the plans will be satisfactory. Yes? Mrs. Bumstead to see you, Mr. Radcliffe. Mrs. Bumstead? Well, uh... Ask her to wait a minute. She's probably here to ask for Dagwood's job back. If you take my advice... You take my advice and get those plans finished. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Oh, hello, Blondie. Hello, Ollie. Psst. <laughs> Bumstead around? Shh. He was fired last week. Fired? Shh. That's a fine client to recommend. Where can I get a hold of him? Yes, sir. You can go in now, Mrs. Bumstead. Blondie, this, this is a surprise. Here's your watch, Mr. Radcliffe. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry this had to happen, Blondie, but Dagwood should have had more sense than to give you a watch that didn't belong to him. Dagwood didn't give me the watch. He didn't give you the watch? No, I took it. You took it? By mistake. I saw the watch and thought it was my anniversary present. Well, why didn't Dagwood explain to you? Because he's too much of a gentleman to embarrass me in front of my children. But you, being a confirmed bachelor, wouldn't understand about those things. My dad would never did a dishonest thing in his life, and if you hadn't worked him day and night, he would have had time to buy me a present, if you had paid him enough to buy me that present. Well, if Dad would have explained all those things to me, I wouldn't have fired him. But you did fire him, and I'm glad you did. You have Dagwood come down to see me tomorrow morning, and perhaps... I won't allow Dagwood to come down here tomorrow morning or any other morning. There are plenty of jobs open for a man as capable as my Dagwood. Yes, I know, but... Good day, Mr. Radcliffe. And another thing, I have my suspicions about a man who spends $300 for a watch for some, some, some girl he's just met. Excuse me. Mr. Breckenbridge's office. Oh, it's you, Mr. Radcliffe. Uh, that little watch matter is all straightened out. I, I have it right here in front of me. Uh, you know, nothing would give me greater pleasure than to present it to you personally. Possibly uh, over a delicious dinner in some uh, cozy spot. Well, I did have an appointment with someone else. 
But I'd be glad to cancel it for you. You decide the uh, cozy spot you'd like to go to. Be sure it's one with soft lights and sweet music. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Burley and you, yes, Mr. Dalton? Do you mind waiting a moment? No, no they're right ahead. That's fine, Mother. I'll be there at 7.30, Mother. All right, Mother. Mother? That was my mother. Here's a little something we thought you might like. For me? Mm-hmm. Don't tell me these are real diamonds. Why, this must have cost a small fortune. It did. I wouldn't think of taking such an expensive gift. I really shouldn't accept this. <laughs> oh, Mr. Burley and Mr. Dalton, do you want to see me about something? Well, well we, uh, uh, that uh, is... Uh, Mr. Burley well. forgot his fountain pen when he was here yesterday. Yes, thank you so much. Oh, I see. More people lose fountain pens in this office. Oh, thank you for your quick thinking, Miss Stafford. Oh, and thank you for this wonderful present. But I still can't understand why you gave me such an expensive one. Well, you've been very nice to us. The least we can do is be nice to you. Nice? Uh, well, yes. Whenever we wanted an appointment with Mr. Uh, Breckenbridge, you very kindly arranged it. In other words, you've been very <laughs> cooperative. And we hope you'll continue to be cooperative. Oh, I will. And I sincerely hope that your firm underbids the Radcliffe Construction Company. Oh, I'm so glad you feel that way about it. Confidentially, if we should get this contract through, uh... Well, there's lots more diamonds where they came from. Oh. Now, how about having dinner with me tonight? Oh, I'd love to. But you heard me make an appointment with my, uh, mother for tonight. And you wouldn't want me to disappoint my mother, oh, would you? Of course not. There's no rush. I can wait. How about tomorrow night? I'd be delighted. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Miss Stafford. Goodbye. drying dishes, but not me. <laughs> I use my head. Dad one. Oh. I'm in the kitchen, Bondi. Oh, where are you going, Bondi? Uh, run along, Cookie, darling. Dad, what I'm going to the bank. I've got to draw a little money out of my savings account. Yeah, how little? Oh, only twenty dollars. Oh, but I figure you'll be working by the time that's gone. Gee, I, I, I hate to see you using your savings, Blondie, and besides... Well, I... Dad, would you've only been out of work for a little over a week. Now, stop worrying. After all, a man of your capabilities can't be unemployed for very long. I hope you're right, Blondie, but things sure look gloomy right now, don't they? Well, no wonder things look gloomy. If you'd just let in a little bit of sunlight, you'd be so right <laughs> 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 Mr. Breckenbridge's office. Oh, good morning, Mr. Radcliffe. I uh, hope your mother is not angry with me for keeping you out so late last night. I uh, sort of lose all sense of time when I'm under soft lights and with such charming company as you, Gloria. <laughs> oh, we must do it again. Soon, I hope. Oh, yes, he's in. Uh, just one moment. Mr. Radcliffe on the phone, Mr. Breckenbridge. Thank you. Yes, Radcliffe. I received your plans and the estimate. I like the plans immensely. 
Well, thanks, Mr. Breckenridge. Now, how did my bid strike you? I was pleasantly surprised. I thought a hospital of that size would cost much more. Well, we expect to stay in business a long time, Mr. Breckenridge. We don't believe in making enough on one job to retire. I think you have a very good chance of getting the contract, Redcliffe. And as soon as I receive Burley and Dalton's bid, I'll let you know. Yes, Mr. Breckenridge. Will you come in a moment, please, Miss Stafford? Yes, sir. Here's the Redcliffe Construction Company's bid. Take care of it, please. Yes, Mr. Breckenridge. You better call Burley and Dalton and remind them that I must have their plans and bid by next week. Yes, Mr. Breckenridge. for me, a super duper for you, and a, a duper for you. Instead, oh, well, if you can't pay the principal, how about the 10 days interest? Interest? Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, that's only a dollar. I'll... A dollar? Uh -huh. How did you get to that figure? Uh, well, uh, let's see. That's, uh, well, I've had the loan for 10 days, and that's 10 cents a day, and that's exactly one dollar. Your arithmetic and my arithmetic don't add up, bub. Uh -huh. It's 10 cents a day on the dollar. So, oh, you know, this is liable to shock you, Bumstead. Yeah. On the first day, the interest was three bucks, making you owe me thirty-three dollars. Uh huh. Ah. And on the second day, the interest was three dollars and thirty cents, bringing a loan up to thirty-six dollars and thirty cents. Uh huh. Ah. Now on the third day. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What does it amount to today? Well, today being the tenth day, uh -huh. you owe me a little over seventy-five bucks. Huh? Uh huh. Oh, I, I can't understand that interest. Well, you can, eh? Uh -uh. <laughs> well, this is known as compound interest. Uh, compound? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Compound fracture interest. Compound fracture? Yeah. If you don't get that dough up in 24 hours, I come and pound a fracture in your skull. Uh -oh. See how it works out? Uh, uh, yeah, but... No, thanks, Alexander. I just lost my appetite. Oh, oh, hello, Blondie. Who is that man who just left here, Dagwood? Oh, uh, just someone who uh, has an interest in me. Is it about a job? Uh, no, not exactly. He just came here to tell me that if I don't go to work in 24 hours, he'd lose all of his interest in me. find out how much Radcliffe's bid is, do you think we can beat it? It's a cinch. On the concrete alone, we can make a few grand. Oh, I'm a little leery, Bob, about using six parts of sand or one part cement. I tell you, it's all right. Uh, okay, come on, take a look. Well, it's a little over six parts sand. Matter of fact, it's almost seven. Let's see how tough it is. I don't think that stuff will hold. It'll hold long enough for us to get out of town. Oh, <laughs> oh how do you do, Miss Stanford? How do you oh, do? Oh, hiya, Gloria. <laughs> I didn't see anyone in the other office, so I... Uh... Well, come right in. <laughs> I 
I must say, this doesn't look like a place from whence tall buildings will grow. Well, this is only temporary. We expect to move right after we build the hospital. <laughs> that is, if we uh, get the contract. The old man told me to phone you that he must have the plans and the estimate by next week. I thought it best to tell you in person. Next week? At the latest. Incidentally, I thought you might be interested in this. The figure in the Radcliffe bit. Gloria, I don't know how to thank you for this. You don't? Don't be so naive. I don't see any of your help bumping into each other around here. How are your plans coming along? Oh, well, you see, we've been held up because, uh... <laughs> because, uh... We've been able to find a draftsman. That is the kind that will, uh... Well, that is, uh... uh play uh, ball with you? <laughs> if you want to put it that way, yes. Why don't you hire the fellow the Radcliffe Construction Company fired? I understand he's a good man. And if you're looking for someone to, uh, play ball with you, he looks like he'd be a sucker for a curveball. <laughs> Where could we get hold of him? Well, I suggest looking under the bees in the phone book. When you come to Bumstead, that's him. Ah. What's his initial? Do you need an initial when your name's Bumstead? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Alexander. Hello. Say, what's come over your pop lately? He comes out of the house as though he was going to a funeral. Not once in over a week has he knocked me down. He lost his job. Oh, he did, huh? Oh, well. It's an ill wind that doesn't blow someone some good. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Bumstead. Who? Mr. Burley? Huh? Uh, oh, yes, that's right. I uh, resigned from the Radcliffe Construction Company. <laughs> yeah. How would you like to go to work for us, Mr. Bumstead? You would? I'll give you $50 a week more than Radcliffe did. Hello? Sounds like you fell down or something. Hello? Hello? Oh, there you are. Well, we have to have a set of plans made up within a week. If you can do this, we'll take very good care of you. You think you can? Then rush right down here. We're at 422 South Main. Goodbye. You'll be right down. <laughs> Dagwood, what's the matter? What's the matter? Oh, what's the matter? Ah, I got a job. I got a job. Uh -huh. I got a job. Dirty and Boston. Pauline, Dirty and Boston. I'm going to get a fifty dollar a week raise. Oh, I got to get down there right at once. Where's my hat? Oh, no, they're in the kitchen. They're in the kitchen here. I'll get them out. Hurry, Bumstead. You're running to get to dough, you owe me? Oh, oh, no. But I got another job with Burley and Dalton and a $50 a week raise. Well, in that case, I'll extend your loan to one week from today. Okay. <laughs> but that's final.
Tony, I just finished the last of plants. No, I didn't stop for dinner. Oh, you poor dear. Well, I'd tell you to have dinner downtown, but you only took a dollar with you this morning. Have you got enough for car fare home? Uh, yeah, Bonnie, wait a minute, I'll look. Yeah, 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 I, 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 but, Blondie. Yeah, as honest I am. <laughs> Look, see? Yeah. All right, dear. <laughs> Goodbye, I'll be home as soon as I can. Mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, Bumstead has those plans finished for tomorrow. Here they are. Gloria was right. I've never seen anybody whip up a set of plans as fast and as good as this Bumstead. Oh, I hope you're gonna let him go now that he's finished. Not until Breckenbridge okays these plans. You may want some changes made. But, Bob, it's not safe to keep that guy around. He might get wise. You know, personally, I don't think he's as dumb as he looks. That would be impossible. But if he does get cute, he can start working a new set of plans right away for his own mausoleum. Now, about the bit. We could quote about 50 grand under the Radcliffe bill. If we wanted to. Fifty grand? Well, naturally, we're not going to do it. We'll quote a few hundred bucks under the Radcliffe bid. Save the rest for ourselves. Can we cheat that much, Bob? I'll show you the right Well, Bob, Now, we figured to save this much on the cheap concrete mix alone, right? Yeah. Now, instead of using the regular size fire blocks, we'll cut them in half. That should save us this much. Right? Substituting the cheap lumber alone should net us this much. Now, if we could sneak in a thinner gauge metal for the roofing, we'll clean up. Of course, we'll have to pay off the staff again. Yeah. And, and, and Blondie, if Burley and Dalton get that contract today and build that hospital with those kind of materials, it'll collapse in no time. Well, why didn't you tell them that last night? Well, I was going to, but they said something about getting me a mausoleum. A mausoleum? That's for dead people. I, I, I know, I know, I know. You take my advice, Dad. Would you go and tell Mr. Breckenbridge everything you've heard? Oh, he'd never believe me, Blondie. It's, it's my word against theirs. Two against one. Besides, I haven't any proof. <coughs> hmm? What is it, dear? That sheet of paper that they were writing on, if it's still in the office, that's it. What, dear? I heard Mr. Burley writing what they could save on a piece of paper. And then maybe they didn't destroy it. If I can only get to the office before they do. Oh, Dad, when I'm worried, those kind of men are liable to do something terrible to you. Don't worry about me, Blondie. I gotta get that piece of paper. Well, uh, telephone me, dear, if you find the paper. And telephone me if you don't. What are you doing here so early? Well, You've had a pretty tough week's work. Uh -huh. Well, I, um, I... I well, we're I, taking your plans over to Mr. Breckenbridge this morning. Huh? There won't be anything for you to do here. Why don't you take the day off and catch up on some rest? Well, well thanks, Mr. Burley, but... But, but what, Bumstead? Well, I, uh... I... Mr. Burley, I... I quit. You quit? Yeah. But you can't quit yet. Mr. Uh -huh. Breckenbridge may want some changes made. Uh-huh. Well, Mr. Breckenbridge will want a lot of changes when I tell him what you intend to do to that hospital. What I intend to do to that... Yeah, inferior cement. That thin roofing and, and, and cheap lumber and inadequate fire blocks. Who told you that? Hey, nobody told me that. I was under your desk last night and I heard you and Dalton plan the whole thing. And I'm going over and see Mr. Breckenbridge and I'm going to tell him everything. And I'm going over right now. You're going to tell Mr. Breckenbridge huh? what, Bumstead? It's all right, Burke. Getting those plans out in a week has tired out, Bumstead. Huh? He's suffering from what you might say, hallucinations. Oh. Yeah. He's imagining all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, for instance, 
Well, he thinks we're going to use inferior material in the hospital. Mm -hmm. well, now, who gave him that crazy idea? Who knows? Mm -hmm. Overworked, I guess. Huh? Come on now, Bumstead, you sit down and we'll tell you yeah, all well, about it. Yeah, well, I don't want to sit down. I want to go and see Mr. Breckenbridge. Now, 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 don't get yourself oh. all excited. Mm -hmm. Bumstead, how would you like a nice vacation? Huh? Two weeks in pay, all expenses paid. Yeah, that goes for your family, too, of course. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Burr, And a uh, thousand dollars spending money. A thousand dollars? Well, <laughs> no. Couldn't you use a thousand dollars, Bumstead? Yes, I, I, I guess I could. Well, then accept our offer, Bumstead. Your job will be here waiting for you when you get back. Well? No. Look, I've got children of my own, Mr. Burley, and I can't stand by and watch a lot of little kids crush to death. Well, what makes you think they will be? Well, why, that hospital will collapse with the kind of concrete that you're going to use under it. Now, look, suppose I prove to you that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the concrete we're using. Well, then, I'll admit I'm wrong and forget the whole thing. Well, now, that sounds more like it. Yeah. We'll mix some up and let you decide whether it's good or not. Well, all I ask is that it will hold up that hospital. Oh, our concrete will hold up lots more than that. I promise you. Mr. Brackenbridge's office. Who? Mrs. Bumstead. Why, no, Mr. Bumstead hasn't been here. Isn't he at Burley and Dalton's? I've tried to get him there, but I don't get an answer. Will you please connect me with Mr. Breckenbridge? It is. It's very important. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bumstead. I can't disturb Mr. Breckenbridge right now. Good morning, Gloria. Good morning, Miss Stafford. Everything ready? Everything's fine. Well, you better go right in. Radcliffe's already here. Hello! 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 Operator! Operator! Hello! Stafford, I got that phone! Sharky, for the first time since I met you, I'm glad to see you. What are you soaking your dogs in that concrete fur? Oh, come on, get me out of here. I gotta get to the bank, see Mr. Breckenbridge before he signs that contract. What oh. about our little contract? Where's my oh. dough? Oh, well, well, just get me out of here, Sharky, and I'll pay you. You mean you got the dough on you? Uh, well... You know, uh, by now, you owe me quite a sockful. Yeah, well, sockful? Yeah, sockful. Mm -hmm. So, come on, get it up, and I'll get you out of there, all right. Yeah, well, uh, I can't get it up while I'm stuck in here. And why not? Well, uh, the money's in my shoe. Oh, yeah. it is, huh? Uh -huh. Well, it better be. Huh? Well, of course, if it ain't, huh? Look out. <laughs> All right, now off with the shoes. There. Oh, uh, 
Say, uh, it's not in there. It's in this one here. Uh, wait a minute. There. Oh, I dropped it. Why, oh, you... Come here, Bumstead! Mr. Radcliffe's specifications seem to be in order. Now, Mr. Burley, may I have your bid? a few thousand dollars. Oh, well, I don't know how they did it. You said yourself that my figure was surprisingly low. Well, you see, Mr. Breckenbridge, building a hospital is different from building a bridge or a dam. Any firm with any amount of decency wouldn't try to make a big profit on a building of mercy. <clears throat> I understand. I'm sorry, Radcliffe. Well, Mr. Stafford, bring in the contract, please. Mrs. Bumstead, has my husband been here since I phoned? No, he hasn't. Then I must see Mr. Breckenbridge right away. Mr. Breckenbridge did not see anyone right now. But this is very important. I'm sorry. Please. Mr. Radcliffe, you mustn't let them sign that contract. What can I do? Well, I'll tell you what you can do. Last night, Dagwood was hiding under the desk in their office. All we have to do is fill in your firm's name and the price you submitted. They intend doing that? Why, why then, Gloria, I mean, Miss Stafford tipped them off about my bid. Come on. For oh, just a moment. Little chiseler. And they're going to use cheap lumber, cheap cement, and cheap everything. These are serious accusations, Mrs. Bumstead. Can you prove them? Dagwood can prove them. He was under their desk last night and heard everything they planned. Oh, why, this is ridiculous. Dagwood may be a little stupid uh, about certain things, but he's honest. Honest? He's so honest, he dreamed up this little fairy tale so you could get the contract and he could get it back in your good graces. Gentlemen. Mrs. Bumstead, if your husband has proof of this attempted fraud, why isn't he here? He was coming to tell you, but I, uh, I don't know what's happened to him. A likely story. He hasn't got nerve enough to face us and make those charges. Uh, where do I sign? Mr. Breckenbridge, please don't let him sign that contract. Wait till Dagwood gets here. He'll never get here. Mr. Breckenbridge, where do I sign? You can't! Am I too late? Oh, huh? Dagwood, I'm so glad you're here. I've already told Mr. Breckenbridge about all the things you heard. Now you tell him it's yeah. true. Yeah, it's true, Mr. Breckenbridge. They're going to use all inferior material. Can you prove that, Mr. Bumstead? Yeah, go prove on, it. prove it. Well, it's only my word against theirs. But I was under the desk and I heard the whole thing. But Dagwood, huh? the paper. The, the, paper? the paper? Oh, yes, the paper. Wait a minute. Paper. Yeah. 
It was two pairs of socks, two <laughs> shirts, three under... Oh, no, no, that's an old paper. Wait a minute. I got it. Huh? Oh. Yeah, there it is. Let's go back in, right? This is written on your letterhead, and it doesn't take a handwriting expert to see that these are both in the same person's handwriting. Mr. Burley, I have my opinion of a man who would try to cheat on a, a... A building of mercy? Yes. And if you're not out of this town immediately, I'll see that you're put where you belong. Dagwood? Where are your shoes? Oh. Wait a minute. Looks like you're the winner after all. Oh, I'll start excavating immediately. And I assure you, Mr. Breckenbridge, that if you leave everything in my hands, you'll be more than satisfied. Uh, there's just one thing. Yes? I, I must say, I like Burley and Dalton's plans a little better than yours. You mean Dagwood's plans? Uh, yes. Uh, the layout is a little better. Well, I'd be very glad to follow those plans. Just a minute, Mr. Radcliffe. Dagwood doesn't work for you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to let bygones be bygones. Oh, me too. <laughs> Just a minute, dear. Huh? Mr. Radcliffe, I'll allow Dagwood to go back to work for you if you'll pay him the same salary Burley and Dalton did. Well, how much was that? Fifty dollars a week more than you paid him. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> oh, there you are. Now, wait, you wait. and your shoes. You... Wait, 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 wait. This is Mr. Sharkey, everybody. You give me the dough you owe me or I'll break every bone. What money does Dagwood owe you? $137.83. That's what he owes me, but I'll knock off the 83 cents for cash. Dagwood, is this true? Yes, I borrowed it, Blondie. $137? Yes. Yeah. Well, I only borrowed 30 The, the rest is interest. Interest? It is compound fractured interest. Never heard of such a thing. How long have you had this loan? Oh, about 16 days. 16 days? Give him his $30 back and a dollar for interest. Now, just a minute, bub. Loaning money is my business. It's my business, too, and there's a law prohibiting your kind of business. Give him $31, Dagwood, and no more. Oh, well, uh... <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I, uh... Oh, uh... Mr. Radcliffe. Oh. Oh. Well. <laughs> uh, oh, no, you don't. I ain't gonna sell for no $31. I'm losing money on a deal like this. Shall I call the police now? Now, don't bother, Buster. But this has taught me a lesson. Never to do business with a bunch of Sharpies. <laughs> Can you tell me how to get to the bus station, sister? Follow me, brother. That's where I'm going. That should be a lesson to you, Dagwood. Huh. Never do business with a loan shark. If you need money, come to a reliable bank. Uh, thanks, Mr. Breckenbridge. I'll never forget that. And you'll never forget our anniversary again. <laughs> I promise, dear. Well, he didn't really forget the last one. Huh? Blondie? I want you to have this. Oh, no thank you, Mr. Radcliffe. I couldn't accept that from you. Well, you're not accepting it from me. Dagwood has earned it. Dagwood, you give it to Blondie. Oh, gee, oh. thanks, Mr. Radcliffe. <laughs> now I can really have it engraved. <laughs> what are you going to put on it, dear? Oh, something like, uh, to Blondie, the most wonderful wife a man ever had on our 15th wedding anniversary. <laughs> no wife could be sweeter, truer, more loyal, or as faithful as mine is. To a wife that would stick to you for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, through sunshine and rain, for better or for worse. Dagwood. For, uh, what are you having engraved, that bracelet or a belt? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. 